Hi friends, this is Audi1 and you're watching part 10 of the SQL Lab series. For those who are watching this for the first time, it is strongly recommended that you go back and watch the first 9 parts. In this video, we will be discussing the use of an out file or the use of dump file to dump the database using the file system. So let's start. For this purpose, I am using lesson 7 to demonstrate the use. But other exercises like lesson 8 and lesson 9, the blind SQL injection or the boolean based injections can also be used to try the out file. So as discussed earlier, the first primary process is to fuzz and try to break the query and see how it reacts. Let's do it. So id equals 1, id equals 8, 7, id equals 100 and we have an error message. Let's say id equals 50, we have an error message. If we say news it has an error message let's say one apostrophe again it has an error message we say double quotes nothing let's try the escape character that is a slash again we have an error message so presumably we can assume that okay by giving an apostrophe, we have an error message. This error message is not as elaborative as we had seen in the earlier videos. It is just a generic message. Well, a kind of a semi-blind or a blind because we cannot interpret the error message and react. So let's try to fix the query. but the query does not get fixed. That means that we, we are not able to successfully enumerate and guess what the web developer is using in the backend. Let's try some parentheses because he may enclose a single quote and a parenthesis around. Let's try. Did not work. Well, let me try another one. And it worked. Let me try changing id equals to. So well, we are able to fix the query by providing a single quote and two parentheses to initially escape and then fixing the rest of the query. Well, we can continue with this, but just for demonstration purpose, I'll be trying to balance the query or let's start the parenthesis and this should be able to fix it and yes it is because we know that inside the query at the back end the developer has already provided this quote and the right side of parenthesis. So we don't need to do anything and it works. Let's come back to our initial stage. Now as we have the left side and the right side, we can inject anything into it. Well before continuing the injection on the front end, as usual I would like to discuss some functions on the back end. Let's open up our prompt mysql hyphen u root hyphen p tour and let's use our database security use 
security let's try to dump the database with the basic command we can say select star from users because now we know that from our previous videos that the name of the table is users else you can also use show table commands to list the tables first and then use the table now select star from users dumps the entries on the screen but instead of dumping it on the screen we can also ask mysql to write them to a file using a function called out file select star from users into out file and the name of the file i say slash tmp slash test dot txt this time it just gave a message that eight rows have been affected let's see if the file test dot text exists cd slash tmp and test dot txt is there let's see the contents and we have the contents coming back to the mysql there is another function that can be used which is known as dump file but the difference between an out file and the dump file would be that with out file you can define delimiters you can define how you will be ending the line you can define how uh, you can separate the different fields but with dump file it is just in a single row so it just takes one row and just dumps one row so in this case as there are eight rows you will get an error message let's see that result consisted of more than one row well to get rid of this error we can just say limit and we get a new error that mentions that file slash temp slash test one already exists so we learned two new things one that for dump file it can just use a single row and secondly when you're using mysql to write files to the file system then it cannot overwrite an existing file so every time it has to be a new file let's try it and let's give it test 2 and this time it works let's go and check ls and let's check in detail the permissions well when mysql is writing the files they are word readable and writable so in any case it is a very bad idea if mysql is running as root let's continue before going back to the front end i would like to introduce another function called load file which can be used to load files from the file system into mysql select load 
underscore file and you can just specify the location of the file let's load etc slash password slash etc slash passwd and let's terminate the query with the semicolon and you see it dumped the password file now let's combine both of them and dump it into out file and let's define slash etc slash test 4.txt my apologies my sql does not have the permissions to write to etc folder we had to use temp and it worked let's check the temp folder ls and we can say cat test 4 dot text and it should have our password file and exactly it has our password file now let's come back to the front end before continuing here there is a constraint because we are using mysql to write files on the file system therefore for this kind of an attack to work the mysql should have permissions to write to a location which you can access through the front end or through the web so let's double check the permissions let me sudo myself and let's check the permissions of our lesson 7 cd slash var slash www slash sequely labs and let's check for my lab i have explicitly given read write execute to everyone the chmod 777 permissions because it's a test lab in production it is a very bad practice if you do so so here i am able to write read and write files and any it's world readable and writable let's come back and let's try something we have the left side and we have the right side so the next step we have is we can use the order by clause order by three well we all might be knowing by now how many columns we have so let's do order by four and we get an error message thereby confirming that we have three columns being used in the backend query that the web developer has put in let's do a union select one comma two comma three into out file and let's give the location slash etc slash var sorry not etc it's slash var slash www slash sequely hyphen labs slash and let's give it union dot txt well you might be thinking how i came to this directory structure it's a complete guess and i'm just trying to guess out this information and we get an error message can somebody guess why we got an error message although it seems that our query is correct union select one two three into out file slash var slash www slash secretly labs slash union dot text well i know the problem but just for the explanation part 
I'll just copy this out and place it on the MySQL backend and provide a semicolon and we get an error message saying can't create write to file slash var slash www sql labs union text correct why because the root of the drive we don't have permissions to we had to append the lesson number less hyphen seven and we can say slash let's be safe call it union one dot text again the error let's try it one more time on the back end it says file union one dot text already exists okay let's give it union two Again, we have an error in the SQL syntax, but let's also check it. Localhost SQL lab lesson seven, and it was union two dot txt wow even though we got an error message but it wrote those things to the file let's invalidate the first part and instead of two, let's use database and in the third column, let's use version. And as we know that it doesn't overwrite, so let's use a new file, union3. And let's check if this file is created and it is created let's try to dump the database table underscore name from in for select one comma table name let's remove the version and let's call it three from information underscore schema dot tables where table underscore schema equals security well even if we don't provide the where clause because we are dumping everything to a file it will make our life easy and let's call it union 4 And let's go and check if union 4 exists it does not so that means we have an error in our SQL query so let's double check it 
select one comma table underscore name comma three from information schema dot tables and let's remove the And there you go. So it just dumps everything from the table. You can specify the where clause. And work with it. But let's just dump the complete table. Select one comma user name password from users. This information I am just using from the previous videos. And we have the complete database. That would be all for this video. I would request you to please leave your feedback. Your feedback helps me improve myself and motivates me to make more videos. Thank you for now. See you next time.